breaking out of our Halloween mold today on the Express. You need me? What do you need me for? We need your <laughs> Sword play, gallows, pirates, and haunted buildings. Coming up, it's eerie nights of fright at Fort Langley. It's a happy Halloween. Says you. Okay, for some of us. <laughs> Also on today's Express, a haunted amusement park, a record-breaking thrill the world, and it's a group of people dressed up as zombies dancing. <laughs> it's gonna get us, it's gonna get us. A chainsaw wielding Charlie. Many, many chocolate bars doesn't And trick-or-treating confession. The less kids that come by, the better, because then there's more left over for me. That and so much more. Welcome back to our Express Trick or Treat Halloween special. I'm Johanna Ward, and no, I'm not doing any trick or treating here with Cookie because I don't think what he has on the table looks very appealing. Although, I will say I'm getting off easy tonight, touring Eerie Nights of Fright in Fort Langley. It's a pretty awesome show. We're going to show you more about it coming up. Speaking of nerves, I'm not the only one whose spine is tingling today. First, we have four haunted houses, a whack of professional scares, and one fearful reporter. Good luck, Aaron Shaw. Fright Nights at Playland has returned. There are rides, performances, ghouls, and of course, haunted houses to frighten even the bravest visitors, just like me. <laughs> but just to be safe, I'm not going in alone. Jay Matt of Screamworks is taking me through the top four attractions at Fright Nights. First up is Terror Under the Big Top, a 3D funhouse with creepy clowns and demented music. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's go. I hate clowns, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> This is creepy. <laughs> oh, man. That was scary. I know. Gets me every time. Gets me every time. Clowns are not my favorite. So what's your favorite part of that whole thing? Because I personally am not a fan of that red-headed clown. My favorite is definitely the 3D aspect of it. Yeah. It really puts things in a different dimension. <laughs> Next is Area 51, an alien-themed creep fest that plays to people's fear of the unknown. Alien dissection. <laughs> is a more traditional haunted house. It's a severed leg. That was close. That was gross. That was gross, gross and close. Gross and close. <laughs> Last is the haunted maze with creatures skulking in every corner. Going into the maze. Ooh. Gonna get lost again. Yeah. Wrong way. One of the scariest things is realizing that you're lost. Aaron? Aaron? Jay? Jay? Fright Nights is on at Playland until Halloween night, Jay? and trust me, if I can do it, you can too. I'm Aaron Shaw at Fright Nights for The Express. Jay? 
You know, it takes them two full months to set up for Fright Nights. Imagine planning Halloween in August. Did a great job, though. They sure made Aaron scream. Thankfully, I'm not the one being hassled or haunted on today's Express Halloween special. I'm leaving that to the ghastly pirates, or in this case, maybe ghostly. Coming up, haunted history at Fort Langley's Eerie Nights of Fright. I'm really a prisoner. <laughs> Plus, MJ's cult classic breaks a world record. We're gonna walk, walk, turn to the right. Thriller, it is a one of a kind, certainly. But you know what? It's not the only Halloween inspired dance show. Up next, we have hip hopping ghouls who are dancing for the hell of it. Think of it as the Rocky Horror Picture Show meets So You Think You Can Dance. This performance showcase highlights Vancouver's most talented and passionate dancers. Wow. Stonefox's dance crew started as a joke because I was bored and there was nothing happening in Vancouver at all. Stonefox! Stonefox! I just kind of had a lot of creativity and I needed to get it out, so I called some of the best uh, female dancers in the city and asked them if they didn't mind performing perhaps for free. And now they've worked alongside the likes of the Black Eyed Peas and Naughty by Nature. I think everybody was really blown away and we were really surprised by how well received we were by everybody else. Perhaps because all five of them are female, hip hop is typically the arena of men and earning the credibility to win them over is not an easy task. We dance aggressively and we can be masculine but at the same time we can still be feminine and tap into that and uh, females can't do that on stage. Well I mean they could. But it's really not the same. The Stone Fox dance crew have co-opted the energy and style of this urban art form to shatter stereotypes. Even this routine defies conventional gender roles. A part of their success was due to a supportive local dance community. We have a really, really talented group of dancers here, uh, but it's smaller, so the community is nice and close and really supportive. <laughs> And as for their style, hip-hop is by no means the only language of movement they speak. Michael, for example, is a classically trained ballet dancer. She's our stone fox in point shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've got girls that are trained in old school locking and popping, jazz contemporary dancers, so um, really well-rounded group of ladies. It may have started on a whim, but the stone fox dance crew are now serious performers. Both their style and success speak volumes on how the modern face of dance is quickly changing. In Vancouver, I'm Peter Kim for The Express. We have more Halloween-inspired dance coming up when Michael Jackson music fans break a world record. In the meantime, pirates are attacking at Eerie Nights of Fright in Fort Langley, and I've picked the wrong place to hide. While these ghouls make a meal of me, have a look at some other gourmet Halloween treats. Halloween's my favorite time of year, but I get bored of the same old treat. And kids may not be picky about chocolate or candy that you give them, but it's nice to switch it up a little. So I'm in search of a special Halloween goodie. My search takes me to the Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory, where they're preparing their signature apples with a Halloween twist. You never bob for apples like these when you were a kid. During this Halloween season, Rocky Mountain plans on making hundreds of these spooky apples the week of Halloween. Manager Allison Peters takes us through the apple making process. Gina is making a special order. This is actually part of a special order of Halloween apples. We actually have an order for what, 70? 70, 7-0 apples. So we have a variety of different uh, Halloween apples that we do, and each season we do different apples. This is probably the most popular one for Halloween, however. You get the caramel with the orange chocolate and the, milk cho and the mint chocolate. A little bit of dark chocolate is a really great combination. It's not easy getting the apples to look like this. Days of preparation are required. The Granny Smith apples are dipped in caramel, which takes up to two hours to cook, 
and then they are put on a tray to set. A few days later, the decorating begins. These delectable pumpkins include hand-piped mint chocolate leaves and dark chocolate eyes. The process may take a while, but these delectable delights will make anyone smile. Now from a caramel apple delight to a cakey delight. Cupcakes are pulling out all the stops for this spooky season. We're with Heather of uh, Cupcakes by Heather and Lori. And look at this spread. This is amazing for Halloween. So JoLynn is going to be decorating some cupcakes. Could you describe what she's doing? Yeah, this is actually a spider cupcake that we did a couple of years ago. And it's been one of those popular um, cupcakes we have to do every year because we get so many requests. Jalyn starts by slathering a chocolate cupcake with rich buttercream frosting. She smooths it out and rolls the cupcake into black sugar. Then the fun part. Our spider is decorated with smarty eyes, marshmallow fangs, and long licorice legs. These tasty treats come in many different sizes, colors, and flavors for everyone to enjoy. Well, we try and do something creative and different with all the different flavors that we have. Uh, the one thing we bring out every October that is backed by popular demand are the pumpkin cupcakes. The pumpkin cupcakes have a pumpkin cream cheese. They're full of cinnamon and spice, and they are so good. I put my creativity to the test and tried to decorate my very own Halloween cupcake. How are you not tempted to eat this entire thing? <laughs> no, we do. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's perfect, a perfect little sweater just for Halloween. I'm Melanie Panetta in Vancouver for The Express. After the break, it's eerie nights of fright, the haunted forest scream train, and thrill the world. Halloween's here, and time for little ghosts and goblins to come out in search of their tricks or treats. But no need to fear, Shaw Pumpkin Patrol is here, keeping kids safe on the streets. Shaw and friends will be driving around in our vans shiny and blue. Plus, visit ShawPumpkinPatrol.com for lots of fun games and enter to win a prize pack or two. Have a safe Halloween with Shaw's Pumpkin Patrol team. Welcome back to the Express Halloween Special. I'm Johanna Ward, and we are following along with the tour at Eerie Nights of Fright in Fort Langley. I'm not really sure what's coming up next, and I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but I think I am off the hook tonight because our youth produce segment, Gen Y, well, they're hanging with Charlie the Chainsaw. <laughs> If you live near Bear Creek Park in Surrey, you may be wondering what all the bone-chilling screams have been about. Tonight, we visit the oh-so-scary Haunted Forest Scream Train. Well, we started the Scream Train uh, in 2000, so this is our ninth year of uh, making people jump and scream and laugh and holler. And everybody has uh, some sort of a hot button that makes them scared. You know, we got aliens, we have the, all kinds of different things. You know, there's the scarecrows, the ghouls, the goblins, uh, the witches, and everybody's jumping out and scaring and touching a hot button somewhere or another to make everybody jump and scream. What are you most worried about on this ride? I'm, a, I'm afraid of everything, so I don't know. Every, anything that's going to move or when it's dark. I'm scared. I was scared walking here to the train station, so don't ask me. I hate dark spots and like, yeah, corners and yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I don't like moths. Yeah, they like flap around. It's not nice. <laughs> What's the scariest thing you think is going to happen? Allison. No, the chainsaw <laughs> guy. He's going to come and slice my neck. I've never been on it, so I don't even know what to expect. So uh, yeah, you might hear me screaming in there. I don't know. I'm scared. Don't be scared. It'll be fine. We'll just, we'll just get on the train. It'll be fine. No, seriously. Like, I'm going to die. There are little kids on this train. The little kids are crying. It will be fine. Don't be scared. Oh, fine. Well, what happens if monsters jump out at us?
scariest part. The dude, he, he like, like behind yeah, you. he like stayed in the cart behind us and, and he kept like, following us. I was freaked out. I was grabbing her arm like the whole time and yeah. I wouldn't let go. <laughs> okay, this one guy was like touching my leg and I was like stomping and like, oh! I wouldn't let go and then I started crying because I didn't know what to do. My neck is like really sweaty because I was screaming too much. That was really spooky. Yeah, I still feel like there's somebody going to come up behind me. Anyways, this is Emmy and Elizabeth signing, signing out for Gen, Gen y, y on the Express. Happy Halloween! Gen Y is brought to you by Options, services to community society. Gen Y is our youth produced segment. All of the reporters are volunteers that are in high school and have an interest in the broadcasting biz. Apparently, they're also fearless, except when it comes to Chainsaw Charlie. We're carrying on with our Express Halloween special, taking a little trip back in time at Eerie Nights of Fright in Fort Langley. Langley, I bet it's already a bit spooky at night. You guys have made it really scary. What have you done? Well, we've put together the upper fort with some really uh, delightfully ghoulish scenes. We have a, a jail and a, and a really nasty man being electrocuted. And we have uh, somebody who's an executioner and a damsel in distress who's just had her husband's head cut off. And then we have a black light scene with some uh, crazy characters in there and of course a fortune teller because you have to have a fortune teller. But I think one of the one of the real super rooms is the uh, hospital and the kitchen where you can come and have some eyeballs for supper and maybe a severed head or two and a few body parts. And Fort Langley, you guys have made it extra scary and maybe educational? Uh, yes, education is scarier than anything else in the world. We, we do have to admit to that. Um, we're a firm believer in entertaining, but we're also a firm believer in making sure that some education gets in there. Tell me what's going on here. What, what's the plot? There's so much going on. It's moving pretty fast. <laughs> well, every year at the Renaissance Festival itself, the storyline continues from year to year. So when we do Halloween, we kind of stick something in between. And this time, Cobbs and Charity, Charity being myself, the captain of the Jade Dragon, and my first mate, Cobbs, have been caught and thrown in jail. So we're introducing the kids to the kind of things that would have been, well, cooked for our last meal, um, the kind of <clears throat> punishment instilled and uh, all the lovely gory bits that, that the time period had to offer. And of course some amazing swordplay that you guys are known for. Well I get to pick on the deputy, you know, I get to take him down. I get the young buck, you know, why not fresh meat? And uh, my first mate gets to pick on the sheriff and uh, we take him down and we escape with Davinia, the Cobbs' love of his life in his arms. And I guess the, the biggest thing is just to stay on the good side of the hangman. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea to stay on his good side, especially when he uh, outsizes us. Like, you try to talk him on the crew, but, you know, just... Somehow he, um, he thinks he's a good guy. He really does think he's a good guy. You know, we, we think we're good guys, too, you know. Right? Oh, damn. <laughs> I am so screwed. And what happens, Hangman, when we're, we're not good to you? I can show you. Okay, so the sword-fighting pirates and the ghoulish scenes at Eerie Nights of Fright at Fort Langley certainly say Halloween. There's also one song and dance synonymous with this hallowed holiday. You're thinking Monster Mash? Well, I'm talking about Thriller. And recently, some zombie fans in Vancouver broke a world record. Down, up, down, up, down, clap, slide, slide, slide. Many of these people dragged themselves out of bed after a rough night to be here. Maybe they didn't get enough brains or something, but it's for a good cause. Breaking the world record for the most people simultaneously dancing Michael Jackson's Thriller. So Thriller World is a part of a worldwide uh, event uh, where everyone in the world dances Thriller at exactly the same time. Uh, 97 different events in 12 countries around the world. Well, not exactly everyone in the world, but they are hoping for about 3,000 zombies to dance Thriller at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Here in Vancouver, there are about 50 people who've been learning the dance through the Ciroc Society at SFU. 
Yeah, we, we organized this in Vancouver, um, partly because it's, it's, uh, it really matches our philosophy on dance. The, the idea behind Thrill the World is that anyone should be able to dance, you know, regardless of the background in dance, whether they have two left feet or not. Now you mentioned it right now, you've been having practices. Let's talk about the process of getting to the point where you can actually dance Thriller. It's been actually really, um, really fun more than anything. Uh, people have been uh, really enthusiastic about it. So here's an obvious question, why? It's just a cracking song. It's just, it's so good as a song. Um, it was, it's probably the most definitive music video in, in the history of music videos. So I've loved this music video for like my entire life. I've pretty much knew the dance before this even came about, came up, so. Breaking a record and being a zombie, two things very good. I like it. It has some fantastic choreography that's actually really easy to learn and really iconic, you know, in this kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a lot to do with why it's so popular. Easy, eh? Hmm, let's see how I do. Big Michael Jackson move. Yeah. It's hand on the belt. I'm sure you've seen it. So it's hand down on the belt, not down here. Not it's down here. On the belt. PG. That's right, PG. Hand out. Point your, uh, your left knee out, and we're gonna bend down and up. So okay. it's down, and as we go down, hand goes down, hand goes up. Now, if you wanna do this really like a zombie, in the yeah. video, when they go up, they yeah. make this really scary ha sound. So it's okay. down. And when you break it down, it's really not that hard, especially with the voice track that cues these dancers along the way. Finally, it's 11 a.m. and time to break the record. Happy Halloween. I'm Erin Shaw in Vancouver for The Express. The unofficial numbers are that almost 4,000 people took part in Thrill the World, bringing dance and zombie loving to the masses. Our local group raised about $1,000. How about some other Halloween events that are still happening that you can get involved with? In? Of course, we have Eerie Nights of Fright here at Fort Langley, and we have these. Killarney's Halloween Carnival offers games, bouncy castles, a haunted house, face painting, grab bags, and a Halloween parade. Whew. It's Halloween Vegas style at Howie's. There'll be door and raffle prizes and, of course, a costume contest. It's an explosive family Halloween event at Minaroo Park with face painting, hot chocolate and fireworks. The first set goes up at 6.30. And of course, when we're talking Halloween, we're talking about the candy, right? Or are we? Is it still about that? We're asking tricks and treats on the streets of Vancouver. Big Arrow chocolate bar, that's awesome. Any mini chocolate bars, doesn't matter what kind. Just so long as it's not fruit or something healthy, because that defeats the purpose. They would have to be chocolate. Uh, Hershey's Kisses are nice. Yeah. Or Hot Toddies. The little chocolate bars, you know, the less kids that come by the better, because then there's more left over for me. The o. Henry chocolate bar. Pumpkin pie afterward, out of the jack-o'-lantern. I would say if you can get like a caramel apple, but those are, you gotta get like an old grandma who's really kind and generous. Snickers bars, yeah. Peanut butter cups. Coffee crisp. In fact, I bought some. I bought the box and fished out all the, all of the coffee crisp. Canadian Smarties, you know. Canadian Smarties? They don't have Smarties in the States. <laughs> so disappointed. Well, they call Smarties like rockets. You know, those are like little powdery things that we, yeah, they're not Smarties. I love Three Musketeer bars. For me, Halloween is actually more about making stuff. I admit this year that I made chicken finger monster claws and guacamole ghoul eyes. I know, I'm kind of a Halloween geek. If you want to get more ideas about events and attractions that are going on, you can go to VancouverHalloween.com. I'm Joe Hannah Warden from All of Us on the Show. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Halloween, and we'll scare you next time.